I've had the chance to go on some really amazing trips lately, and so I thought I would throw all the footage together to kind of recap it for you and show you all the photos that I shot along the way. First was a trip to New York City with the Sunny 16 crew for some meetings, but we of course made a little bit of time every morning to get out and shoot some photos just for fun. I haven't been to New York City in a few years and man was it nice to be back. We lucked out with really awesome weather. Every day was super sunny, which made for all sorts of yummy light and shadows, but it also meant that everyone was out and about. At one point, we passed an older gentleman soaking up some sun smack dab in the middle of an entryway, and upon spotting him, we all wanted a photo. But because he was staring right at us, we all got a little intimidated and we bailed. I bailed. I bailed so hard on that. We made, we made eye contact and I, and I, and I failed. <laughs> but to be honest, as we walked away, I felt in my gut that I needed to go back for the photo. It was just too good to pass up, and I'm so glad I did. During a free afternoon one day, we caught the train out to Coney Island. With the carnival still closed for the season, we weren't sure what we were getting ourselves into, but that made it all the more intriguing. We were met with an empty beach and high-speed winds that kicked up the top layer of sand every couple of minutes. I will thank the wind though, because it made for some really nice texture in what could have been some pretty boring photos.
Coney Island was a very interesting location to only be shooting black and white since the space has so much color. And without the life of the carnival, it was an entirely different environment than what I'm used to seeing captured here. You know what we haven't done in a while? A grain check. Did you just hear that custom grain check jingle? Yeah, that happened. That happened. All thanks to my friend and incredibly talented musician, Hunter Love. Speaking of, I want to talk about music for a second. If you know me even a little bit, you know that I am a massive music lover. And the songs that I put in every one of my videos is incredibly intentional and it plays a key role in the storytelling I do here on YouTube. Track Club is the music licensing service that I've been using since the very beginning of Grain Check. It's given me an amazing amount of creative control, mainly due to their software called MixLab, where you can literally manipulate songs to match your needs. You can mute, single out, and change the volume of each stem in a song. You can change the BPM to slow the song down or speed the song up. And with a new tool, you can actually find similar songs to the ones you know you already like. Track Club has an absolutely stellar roster of musicians, actually including Hunter, who made my custom jingle, and they put out high-quality, unique, radio-worthy music. So if you are looking for any sort of music licensing, please check out the link in my description. It will give you a month free on Track Club. Back to regular scheduled programming. Fast forward a handful of weeks, and now the team and I are on an RV road trip throughout the Eastern Sierra region for a project. Lucky for me, part of that job was to photograph the whole thing. And because it was client work, I got to shoot color film for the first time in six months. On this first morning, the sunrise was so harsh, so fast. There was nothing soft about it like I expected. And unfortunately, I had already loaded Portrait 800 in both of my cameras, thinking it was going to be a gradual build into daytime, but boy, was I wrong. What film Portrait you? 800 in both, which is not the right choice. I know, that's what I have in mind right How now, actually. How harsh it is. <laughs> I'm just getting through the roll from last night. So here we are. Yeah. <laughs> Thought it was going to be soft for longer. Okay, should we move? Try to stay backlit if you can, even because it'll just look better, but it might not work. Look at this, Con. Look at this. Oh, that's sick. <laughs> I am an absolute sucker for the desert, and this landscape is particularly otherworldly, so I was eating this place up. Despite how gorgeous, sometimes places like this can actually be quite difficult to photograph. For example, when I was in these pinnacles right underneath them, it just didn't look all that cool and it didn't photograph very well. You really have to get out of it, you know, step away from it to appreciate it and get the more powerful view. Twenty fifth. 
Elizabeth and see how that in there could be cool. I just really like my landscapes without people in them. End of the roll, I can get rid of the 800. What are you gonna shoot next? Probably gold. We spent some time at the classic spot everyone photographs the pinnacles from to photograph and film the RV driving through those iconic dirt roads. Caleb drove the RV and Niles hung back to film it and they had walkie talkies to communicate with one another and I just shot away. We stopped on our way out of town at this really rundown abandoned gas station, which was definitely begging to be photographed, if you ask me. Yeah. I was so happy to be shooting color for these shots in particular because of that blue and yellow combo, which happens to be a favorite of mine. This scene would look just fine on black and white, but it really, really did pop on Kodak Gold. After a few hours of driving, we made our way into Death Valley, one of my favorite places on the planet. I always feel like I'm on the moon or something when I'm there. If you've ever been, you know what I'm talking about. This place just has a specific feeling to it. It's a little hard to describe. And maybe I'm an alien, but I actually feel very at home when I'm here. We timed the day so we could catch sunset and blue hour at the sand dunes, and I broke off on my own to get some photos from the top of the tallest points with my Contax T3, which was all I was willing to carry for this long trek. This night in particular, as you can see, was seriously magic.
To get down these sand dunes, you actually have to be quite focused since they're steep and slippery. And because of this, I had been staring down at my feet for a couple of minutes and I almost missed one of the most epic moon risings of all time. We're just mobbing down this hill. I was looking down at the sand and then I looked up and saw that. It looks sicker from our eyes. <laughs> not just like a fire of like brush fire whoa yeah and look at these dudes marching out the following day we got back on the road to make our way to alabama hills for the night but when we saw black smoke billowing from the side of the road we stopped to inquire and take some photos of what was a pretty decently sized fire we heard whisperings from locals that two military helicopters may have gone down but we were never able to confirm it The sunrise at Alabama Hills the next morning was everything you'd hope it would be. Mount Whitney was bathing in bright pink for quite a while, which made for some of my favorite shots of the whole trip. The infamous main road was unfortunately closed down, so we just shot what we could from our campsite, which was not too shabby. On our way out, we walked around the town of Lone Pine for some different textures to shoot since we had been shooting so many landscapes. I was not feeling very inspired this morning, and you'll hear I was getting bullied for it. <laughs> shoot something! <laughs> Pick a photo! Pick a comp! A that was a lie. I was absolutely having a comp crisis and I never took that shot. But here are the rest of the photos from the parts of the trip that I simply just don't have footage from. Enjoy and I'll see you in the next one. Thank you.